Recovery underway, a new look at the extensive ongoing efforts to remove containers from the dolly and the wreckage of the Key Bridge. Hello, everyone. I'm Vic Carter. And I'm Denise Koch. Welcome to WJZ's All Local News at 6. Well, now two weeks after that collapse, responders continue efforts to recover the bodies of three victims encased in the wreckage of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Today, WJZ got a close-up view of the work being done in the Patapsco River, showing the long road to recovery ahead. WJZ investigator Mike Elgin is live in South Baltimore. Mike, the Coast Guard granted you a closer look at the damage. Denise and Vic, we left Port Covington here earlier today. It's just a short uh, distance from the disaster site, and it really gives you a new perspective. Seeing that wreckage close up, some of those containers are still not stable. Thankfully, the weather has been pretty good for the past two days as far as removal efforts are concerned. The Coast Guard stressed to us today that this is a complex operation. You're looking at the heart of the damage the massive cargo ship, the Dolly, torn open. Containers are tilted, some precariously, and in the middle of it all, the brave workers, part of an around-the-clock operation to get the mess cleaned up and reopen the Port of Baltimore. Some 4,700 containers are on the dolly. They're trying to move approximately 140 of them, and then they're going to try to get pieces of the key bridge off the ship. This is what we signed up for, and this is what we came to do. Roberto Concepcion is a Coast Guard commander. He says the priority is finding the bodies of three construction workers who remain in the Patapsco River. We've established a general, general area of where we believe the victims are right now. Um, like I said, it's a complex operation that requires a lot of uh, surveying and because uh, there's a lot of debris underneath the waterline and we want to make sure the first responders who are diving uh, to recover those individuals are safe as well. From the water, you can see some of the mangled steel and concrete that remain in the Patapsco River. It's going to be a huge job to get all of that out. You can see the welders cutting away pieces of the bridge, some weigh more than 100 tons. And you can see the power of the impact, how it ripped apart the concrete and rebar that held the bridge together for 47 years. In Washington, lawmakers vowed the government would pay for it all. This will be 100% federal funds in regards to the costs related to the, the destruction and replacement of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. As they paid tribute to those who lost their lives. To do all we can to find the remaining missing three workers and return them to their families. A close-up view of the damage gives new perspective to the tough job ahead as Maryland moves forward two weeks after the tragedy. We want to get this port open as soon as possible because we know there's a lot of the economy that's at stake to get this open. Crew members of the Dolly remain on board. Another reason they want to remove some of those containers is to lighten the load so that they can figure out how to refloat that ship and get the channel back open. Senator Cardin said today there was no firm estimate on a replacement cost for the key bridge. Reporting live in Port Covington, Mike Helgren, WJZ. Mike, thank you. There are so many efforts underway to help provide relief in the wake of this tragedy. If you would like to partner with WJZ and the United Way of Central Maryland, scan the QR code on your screen or head to WJZ.com.